Hey guys, Matthew here. So, quick disclaimer, today we'll be going over Act 7, 8, 9, and 10 in a single, you know, recording of this video because I do not have time to record four different videos and I also do not have time to redo this video multiple times. So, if I ramble a little bit, I'm sorry. If I lose my words and uh, all that good stuff that typically happens whenever I make videos, uh, it's just kind of going to have to stay in and, uh, you know, bear with me. I'm going to try to do my best, and I'm going to try not to forget anything as well. So, first off, when you start in the bridge encampment of Act 7, you'll be heading out to the Broken Bridge. In the Broken Bridge, you have a single quest to do, which will be uh, situated around the, like, um, that's not where I was looking for. It's around, like, here-ish, typically. And uh, that that'll be the exit, but around here typically will be the uh, here or there, like either here or either there, will be the castle where you'll be able to get the silver locket for Whalem. I guess we can just go ahead and go there just to show you guys, for example, uh, where it would be. I so, say yeah, right here. Uh, you'd have the castle. Typically, it's really easy to find because you have you know the uh, actual. There you go. Wait, am I lost or am I lost? Because you'd have the um, the actual um, quest icon showing up. It's normally very close, so I'm not sure what's going on with this layout. Okay, so I guess the Valside area really like screwed this layout up. I've never seen it here. Uh, that being said, I haven't leveled like 28 different characters either. But either way, so you have the dirty lockbox. So you want to do uh, if you haven't if you don't yet have a uh, a granite flask or a diamond flask. If your build uses one of these two, but if your build doesn't use either of those flasks, for example, or you were lucky enough to drop them prior to Act 7, you can just skip ahead. Um, <clears throat> skip ahead from that quest and go to the head to the crossroads. And the crossroads is just like Act 2. You'll head over um, to the waypoint by following the road. From here on out, this will lead you to the Chamber of Sins, but you don't want to go there yet. So you want to head over to the Fell Shrine Runes, just like in Act 2. And you'll follow the road as well here uh, until you reach the, um, uh, where is it, until you reach the uh, the quest, the quest zone for Malagaro's map. So just follow along the road. It's basically the exact same thing as Act 2. It's like a recycled layout. And once you reach the crypt, uh, you'll be looking for um, the... Uh, I believe it's in the crypt level two. You'll be looking for the sarcophagus or whatever it's called for uh, to get the Malagawa's map to keep going. That being said, there is also a trial of ascendancy in this map. Uh, for the most part, it's kind of a recycled layout of Act Two. So uh, just follow along like the outer place, and you'll see like uh, the sarcophagus um, on the map, and you'll also see the little book for the trial of ascendancy. Uh, same thing for the crypt level 2, for the most part, just follow along uh, the edges of the map and that should lead you to the, uh, to the right place. Um, as you can see, container of sins. Once you have that, you can just go ahead and log out. You don't really need to be here anymore. From here, you'd go back to the, uh, the actual crossroads uh, waypoint and head up until you reach the chamber of sins, just like in Act 2. Chamber of Sins, you want to follow along uh, just like in Act 2 and head over to the middle of the map. Uh, I just kind of took a detour here. Uh, yep, that was kind of dumb. It was on the other side. I don't know why I went there. Either way, uh, and here, when you haven't completed the, the quest and all that, you'll have uh, the one dude sitting here, and you can put in the map that you got from the uh, little box that I showed you guys. And once you put in the map, you'll be able to uh, run that map which unfortunately I cannot show you. Um, and once you do that, you'll have the Black Venom. Once you have the Black Venom, you want to head over to the uh, Chamber of Sins Level 2, which is as well, you know, following the, uh, the Waypoint Corridor. And here you'll be looking for the exit, which where the boss was in Act 2. But this time around... It's uh, going to be a little bit different because there is no, like, boss to kill. 
There's also the trial of ascendancy, just like in Act 2, so be sure to do that one while you're here. And otherwise, you'll want to head over here, where uh, Veritas, I believe his name is, is, or whatever, the little boss guy in Act 2, but you want to head straight to the den. Uh, the den is mostly just linear-ish, I want to say. It's not like too big of a deal. Just follow along until you reach the end of it. There are some dead ends, though, just saying. Once you get to the Ashen Fields, uh, you want to follow along the road until you get to Groost, which will be the boss uh, for this place. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just skip that. Once you killed uh, Groost, you'll uh, have uh, the um, the waypoint for uh, the Northern Forest. In the Northern Forest, you have a few objectives. I'd say the best I uh, the best way to run it is just to uh, run in a straight line until you hit a wall on the left side and just follow along. In the Dread Ticket, you'll have uh, two different quests. One which will be to collect all the fireflies uh, around the area, which you will see when you have the quests uh, active. So you won't actually have to like look for them. They're all going to be you know highlighted. And once you've done that, there is also the boss. Uh, in here somewhere which is going to give you a um, a uh, what's it called which is going to give you a skill point when you do when you take care of that uh, this boss is very very rippy uh, so I advise like a good way to take care of it is to stay as f as far away as possible from it really like you really want to stay far from that boss if you can if your build can't then maybe your face tag build then it doesn't matter but for the squishy builds uh, just stay away from uh, from him and whenever he starts screaming just avoid the little black thingies uh, and uh, that should make it pretty easy that's the only part that's actually scary and if you have a granite flask then it really shouldn't be uh, too hard after you've completed that you can simply log out and you'll be able to talk to either I think it's Helena or Yina I can't remember for the um, the quest that had to do with the uh, uh, the fireflies. Then there is a quest that you can do, but that you don't have to do, which was which is going to be to f uh, find the altar for Groost. Uh, but it doesn't really do anything. I believe it gives you like a rare piece of gear or something. Uh, but I'd recommend honestly skipping it. It's not necessary. Uh, it's in memory of Groost, I believe is or is what it's called. But it's it's not a necessary quest. Uh, so you can just go ahead and skip it. Another way to run the Northern Forest, if you rather, honestly, is after you've uh, found this waypoint here, or uh, sorry, after you come into the zone and you find the uh, entrance to the uh, the ticket or whatever it's called, you can just put a portal down here and head to the causeway. And once you find the waypoint in the causeway, uh, you can head back to um, uh, you can head back to where is it? To the bridge encampment and then take your, por your portal back to the northern forest which will you know save you a few seconds from having to like log out go back to the waypoint uh and then go head back to the causeway uh but it it's only a few seconds but you know min maxing um this layout the causeway i honestly don't really know uh too much like well, what's the best way to get through it uh i do know though that having a movement skill ready and available is massive uh, as you can see, once you once you can just literally just jump over all, literally everything, doesn't matter if you hit hit dead ends or or whatever. Because as as mu as as long as you're actually heading forward into uh, into the layout, you you'll you know reach the end eventually. As you can see, like it didn't take forever to actually reach it. It's a pretty um, it's a fairly linear layout, but the ending is not always going to be here. So it can be in many different places. But like I was talking about earlier, once you reach this waypoint, what you can do is head back to the forest encampment, uh, grab your portal, and uh, um, then you know go do the boss, then log out and take your your waypoint back to here. This will be the quest for the uh, the necklace once you have the fireflies, which is why you want to finish that before coming here. Uh, the Val City is a very annoying layout for most people. Uh, that being said, there is an amazing video by Carvaruscu, <laughs> if I want to pronounce his name like that anyways, about how to run this layout most efficiently 
and uh, he can do it literally with the map closed every single time and never fail, uh, which I can't because, uh, you know, I haven't studied the layout enough. Um, I honestly suck with this layout. Like, it's my worst one. But if you guys actually want to put in a few minutes to actually you know, run the layout, maybe, you know, 20, 30, 50 times, whatever it is, um, I am not going in the right place right now. Um, there, there is a video that I'll link in the description, which basically goes over every single possibility of layout when it comes to the Val City, and, uh, how to find the exit, like, every time with literally, like, ah, oh, there we go, with, like, no actual, um, like, n it's not RNG or anything, there's, like, four seeds to the layout, basically, and, uh, if I go on top of my head, just to explain it real quick, uh, if you go in and you hit a wall right here, that goes really far the exit is always going to be here and you can reach the exit by basically following along the outer wall here and coming inside instead of going all the way around like I did like an idiot uh, if you hit a wall and instead of going really far it actually opens up really early then you can just follow that wall and it's going to lead you to the waypoint if you hit a cliff um, that means you have to basically go in a diagonal line or something like up upwards and then uh, do another diagonal line to the waypoint and there's another one like I'll, I'll link the video you guys can see uh, all of it it's it's not uh, that hard uh, I watched it once so like I kind of know but like I haven't really put in the time to actually uh, uh, to actually do it you know properly every time uh, definitely layout I'll have to practice some more because holy crap is it annoying uh, the Temple of Decay, though, is quite a bit easier, to be honest. Like, much easier. Uh, for the most part, you just want to follow along um, w wherever you can and just head to the like the opposite side of the uh, of the waypoint of the entrance where you came in. So for example, it would be here for the Temple of Decay level one. Then, if I head over to the uh, to the opposite side of my entrance, follow along. Uh, it's pretty nice to have a movement skill in this layout because there are some places, uh, as you can see, just head to the opposite side of the entrance. You just always do that. But yeah, movement skills are really nice in, in this area because there are some places, which maybe I can show, uh, like this here that you can actually go over. And that thing will save you a lot of time. So that's something to definitely remember, remember and put in your notes. Like Temple of Decay has some uh, nice little places, little bridges that you can just jump over. But for the most part, as you can see, I can run this layout like without fail, uh, pretty much. All the while I'm explaining exactly how to do it, because it's a very simple layout. You just want to follow along the opposite side of the entrances. And there you go. Temple of Decay level 2, Act 7, finished once you killed the boss, that is. We'll head over into Act 8. So the Act 8, you'll start into in uh, the starting, uh, the starting ramparts. For the most part, just hug the wall, head over to the end of it, and uh, eventually you'll hit the entrance. Maybe someday anyways. Here we go. And then you do the opposite on top. Follow on the, you know, it's a straight line. You can't really mess it up. And that will lead you to uh, the sarn encampment for act eight so act eight starts off with um the toxic conduits the toxic conduits um for the most part isn't like that complicated there are some dead ends though but for the most part you just kind of want to head over to the opposite side of the entrance of the layout just like any other layout there are multiple dead ends though as you can see i just hit one there uh, and there we go. Once you're in Dodri cesspool, it's essentially the same. Head over to the opposite uh, opposite side of wherever you enter the zone. Some dead ends. Uh, not much you can do about it, though. Uh, it's a de decent zone to farm in terms of XP, so even if you like get lost, it's not the end of the world. Uh, Dodres, I hate Dodres. She's a really annoying boss to actually, uh, to actually do. Uh, what I'd say, though, in terms of giving any advice when it comes to Dodre, is simply that whenever there's too much stuff on the ground, 
Uh, just hit the valve and reset it. And uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue at that point. All right. So once you've finished Dode's stress pool, you want to head over to the K or the Quay. I, I don't know how you pronounce that. The K, I guess. Uh, every time. Because the map is basically a half-half. One side will lead to the K, and the other side will lead to the Grand Promenade with the Bathhouse and the High Gardens. You always want to head to the K, because how you'll run Act 8 is you'll go here. You'll do the Ankh of Purity quest for the skill point. You head to the Grain Gate, where you'll do the Gemling Legion for the skill point. Then you'll head to the Imperial Fields, Solaris Temple, Solaris Concourse, uh, Concourse or whatever. You'll grab the Waypoint here, um, or you really don't have to if you don't find it. Then you head to the Arbor Bridge, the Lunaris Concourse, the Lunaris Temple, uh, and you'll grab the Waypoint in the Lunaris Concourse if you don't have it in the Lunaris, uh, uh, the Solaris Concourse. It's one or the other. And when you're done running the Lunaris Temple, and you have both the orbs, the sun, and the moon, or whatever. You head back to the waypoint for the Lunaris Concourse, and head back into the Harbor Bridge. You do not want to run the Bathhouse, or the Grand Promenade, or the High Gardens, yet. The reason for that is because uh, they simply take a long time to run, and they're not worth it in terms of like actually getting to maps. Because there's no nothing in the Grand Promenade, there's nothing in the bathhouse except a trial of ascendancy but you only need it for merciless lab so you'll be coming back later for that trial uh when you're ready to do your merciless lab which is probably going to be like in your level 70s right and even later for some some builds uh, that struggle with lab and then for high gardens You'll do that whenever you basically you go do uh, the bathhouse uh, trial of ascendancy. There's also the wings of its quest in the bathhouse, but it doesn't give you anything. It doesn't give you a skill point or anything like that. The only skill point will be from the high gardens from Grothgol, uh, and the grand promenade is a complete waste versus a skill point in the K and a and a skill point in the grand gate. This is why we go uh, the right hand side and we totally skip uh, the left side until much later. So that's how you run Act Eight. Uh, so in terms of layout, the Ankh of Purity for the skill point quest, um, for the most part, will always be uh, to the like right, uh, sorry, left hand side on a like random little, uh, random little island, if you want to call it that. That's not part of like the main layout, um, and it can be in two different locations. Um, so let's see if we can find it. All right, so here it would be like as you get whenever you see this little tiny tiny little bridge uh, That's very close to the entrance. It's either here or here ish uh, Then you get the sealed and uh, The sealed thingy whatever you get the the anchor of purity and then you can keep running the layout for the most part It's a pretty like linear layout. You just kind of want to head to the end of it and uh, Go down Mo like most of it is going to be just head down uh, as you can see here I, I would actually reach your grain gate. So, th for example, this is this is me fucking up the reading of the layout, right? This is me not paying attention and actually uh, going to the end of the, the layout. So what I would do in this case... Oops. What I would do in this case is put a portal scroll down here and head back to the... Uh, or Sorry, not head back. What am I saying? Put a portal scroll down here and actually head into the grain gate until I... Uh, uh, I'm not, I wouldn't actually take this waypoint. I'd continue on until I find uh, the Gemling Legion. So when it comes to the Grain Gate, you sh it's kind of like the, the layout that they killed in Act 3. You just want to follow along the dead guards, uh, and those will lead you to the right place. For example, there's a dead guard here. Uh, then this would be the Gemling Legion. These would give you a skill point. There's a dead guard here. Get head over it. Keep going over, and all of a sudden, there we go. We're in the Imperial Fields. So from the Imperial Fields, you want to keep going uh, pretty much in a diagonal line until you find the waypoint. Then you could head back to the Sarn Encampment and uh, head back to your, um, um, sorry, to your uh, portal for the K. And you could go ahead and actually run the, uh, 
uh, the K quests. That being said, I mean, you could go, like, as soon as you actually reach the waypoint in the... Uh, sorry, in the other place, or even, like, skip it completely, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Uh, so here would be the quest for the uh, the resurrection site, which will be once you have the Ankh of Purity. So I'll go ahead and log out. Uh, but that was my mistake. That's not typically a mistake you'll make when actually speed running, uh, speed running through. You definitely want to make sure to get that quest because you don't want to ever have to backtrack, or at least as much, or as least as possible. And that was a very like easy mistake to fix uh, by not, you know, actually heading to the end of the layout before I was done with the quest. And for example, if I was to show you guys real quick, uh, when it comes to finding the actual, um, when it comes to actually finding um, the uh, the quest place, basically. The layout will look just like this almost every single time, right? As I said, the entrance will be here. The Ankh of Purity will be either here, whenever you find this little, little bridge, or like here-ish, like in this area. Afterwards, it's basically like a straight line, and you take whatever entrance, um, whatever like little bridge when you have to, because you hit a wall. For example, I had to hit a wall, then I head over under the little bridge, and then I hit a wall, head over there, and that led me to the end of it. Uh, but that was a mistake. Like, the moment I see this little bridge here, right, I should have known if I was paying attention that I, if I cut down, I'll head over to the end of the waypoint. But if I keep going forward until I hit a wall, this is going to be the quest area, right? Because the layout never really changes. It's pretty much static. Not like a completely static, but pretty much almost anyways. Um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, go with the Imperial Fields. Uh, the Imperial Fields, you pretty much want to follow along the road until you hit the, um, the, uh, this, this area. When you see this thing on, these things on the ground, this means you're at the Solaris Temple Level 1. Uh, Solaris Temple Level 1 is the exact same thing as in Act 3. You want to follow along the red carpets. There are some dead ends, which you, uh, can or can't prevent. It really depends. Uh, but for the most part, if you just follow along the red carpets, it should lead you to the right place. Um, so you don't really need, actually, yes, yes, sorry, you do need this waypoint. Uh, this waypoint is important, uh, because the boss is in another area, and you want to log out after you do the boss, so you want to head back to the waypoint to keep going to, uh, the, because you have the Solaris Temple Level 2 here, but if I would have went the other way, which is probably, like, here-ish, that will lead me to the, uh, the Solaris Concourse. So I do want to grab this waypoint over here. It's pretty important. If you don't want to have to backtrack from like the Grain Gate or something. So for the most part, Solaris Temple Level 2, exact same thing. Follow along the red carpets. Some dead ends possible. Uh, some can and some cannot be prevented. Uh, for example here. No, okay, this might actually still be the right way. Or it might be like the biggest debate ever. No, it can't be. So here I have the portal, right? The portal will lead me to um, to the boss. But then afterwards... Uh, oops, sorry. I just keep hitting the wrong keys. Afterwards, I'm still in the Seralis Temple, right? So I don't have another waypoint. Which is why after you kill the boss and you don't want to backtrack, you kind of have to log out. Which is why it's really important. Like, I cannot stress how important it is to get that Solaris Temple waypoint. Uh, because you will hate yourself if you don't get it. Because <laughs> you'll be losing a lot of time just going back on your uh, on your tracks. So I'm not exactly sure where the exit is here. Okay, it's probably here. Yep. So this led me to the Solaris Concourse. So the basically the waypoint is here, and you'll have one side going to the uh, the boss, and the other side going to Solaris Concourse. Uh, for the most part, this the the side that keeps going, like where the waypoint was going. So for example, I came in from here, and the waypoint was here, and further was the uh, the boss, and either at the same exact uh, place, but on another side of from where I came in. So I came in from here, so it could have been like here. Uh, could have been uh, leading me to the Solaris, or it's going to be before, as you can see here, uh, which is why finding the, the waypoint is really important. Like, for example, if I was to find the Solaris Conquerors before finding the waypoint, that would have been a major mistake in my uh, layout read, 
and I would have to actually like uh, head back or put it well I'd put a portal scroll down here head into the Solaris concourse find the waypoint then head back here and run this instead right so hopefully uh, that was like understandable so I'd head into the Solaris concourse after putting my portal down then I'd actually head over uh, in here you just always want to basically head downwards you'll find the waypoint so after finding my waypoint here for example I would have went back to starting encampment into my portal scroll for the, the Solaris temple and then I would have uh, headed all the way to the boss done that logged out and took my uh, my waypoint back to the Solaris concourse yeah hopefully that made sense um, for the most part, it's a very linear layout. The Solaris Concourse and the Solaris, uh, or the Lunaris Concourse, is straight, straight line. Straight line to the Harbor Bridge. Harbor Bridge uh, is the exact same thing. Literally a straight line that has uh, three different levels or sides, you know, top, bottom, and middle. Uh, but the layout itself is static as far as I know. It's literally just a straight line. So you want to do this. Uh, I think that's a mistake. I think there should be. A waypoint right there uh, which would feel really good instead of having to actually uh, waste time and backtrack having a waypoint right there would be so cool but it's not the case we don't have that either way though so there's concourse same exact thing head upwards uh, if you don't have this waypoint uh, get this one if you have this one it doesn't really matter and over to the uh, just always head out head upwards basically until you hit the Lunaris Temple, it's the, it's the exact same thing as, um, what's it called, that one layout in Act 3? Let's see. It's the exact same thing as uh, the Bony Brax, for the most part, anyways. Lunaris Temple is essentially the same thing as Solaris Temple, but instead of the you know carpets being red, they're blue. Um, in my opinion, actually, it's actually easier because the Solaris Temple seems to be not only a reskin, but they actually kind of mix, mixed up the layout a bit. But for the Lunaris Temple layout, uh, it seems to be literally a copy-paste of the Lunaris Temple in, in Act 3. Literally, or the Solaris Temple. It's literally copy-pasted, but it's blue. So, yeah. For the most part, if you know how to run that layout in Act 3, uh, this one is literally... The exact same thing so there are some dead ends obviously uh, but you want to look for these uh, staircases that go up just like it was in act 3 staircase that go up nice I'm on the right way let's find another one maybe nope it's a dead end oh yeah it was right here I'm stupid I saw it staircase that goes up I'm on the right way staircase that goes up um, then I actually never really looked if the side with one cart was the actually a dead end in this layout. Nope, doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be the case. So um, there are some dead ends obviously in uh, this area. Having a movement skill, you can jump over everything though, so it's it's pretty nice. I don't know why I went here. I literally I actually know that it's not there. You look for the big gates, just like in Act Three. When you find the big gates, you found the right way. And portal scroll, or sorry, portal brings you to the boss. Uh, I'd recommend having um, some cold resistance. And if if you have a skill that can hit from afar, you can literally just sit behind this and he can't hit you. These things that are thrown by the big ball guy will hit you, but like they don't really do any. Uh, you, you can just dodge them really easily, and they don't do much damage. Uh, so those bosses are actually pretty damn easy. Alright, so once you've killed that guy, you'll want to head over to either your Solaris Concourse waypoint or Lunaris Concourse, depending on um, which one you have, basically. I'm not sure if one is faster than the other. I don't really think so. For the most part, they seem to be the exact same thing, and they're both straight lines, so not too big of a deal. So afterwards, we'll head into uh, the Sky Shrine where we'll be able to kill the two uh, the two bosses, the boss. And uh, some people say it's better to kill the sun boss first. Some people say it's better to kill the moon boss first. I'm a softcore player, so I don't really know if one is more ripper than the other because I don't really stop to care. 
So that's it for Act 8. Act 9 now. Act 9. So Act 7 and 8 are actually relatively long compared to, say, Act 4 and 5. Uh, Act 9 is another one that's actually relatively long, I guess you could say. Um, but it really depends if you're going to do every quest or not. And uh, I'll be going over what that means. So the Blood Aqueducts, when you get here, I would recommend far farming the zone until level 60 because you have the possibility of the Humility card dropping. Uh, but as soon as you hit level 60, you can just go on with your life. And... Um, yeah, because it's not really worth it in terms of XP. You're not penalized. Uh, in hardcore, some people would farm this until they get a tabula, so say until like level 70. Uh, but for the softcore boys, if your build can work on the 4-link, because you should have at least a 4-link at this point, uh, you can just leave Blood Aqueduct at level 60. So once you leave Blood Aqueducts, uh, you're going to be heading into the, uh, the Descent, which is uh, essentially a pretty, you know, pretty easy layout. Uh, you just, it's just basically essentially a straight line for every, uh, for every, um, sorry, what am I saying? Uh, for every, uh, layer of it. And there's like three, I believe, and this should lead me to the desert. It's, it's like a very small layout. Even if you were to like get lost in full clear, it's very small. So for the most part, you can't really lose much time in the descent. Alright, so the Vestiary Desert. This one is a little bit tricky because you have two ways to actually go about this. You can do either do the speed runway. So what you'll do is you want to find uh, the waypoint for the Vestiary Desert. Or you could even skip the waypoint completely uh, and head straight to the foothills because you can do that. And that is what you want to do if you're just after the main quests. If your build is strong enough to actually do the Oasis as well as the... Uh, the uh, what's it called the scorpion boss like at this point in the game you could consider it but a lot of people are actually going to skip that and come back when they're much much stronger because it's just uh it feels like a, a waste of time you have to wait for all the phases it's just not very fun uh but you can do it if you want to do that and go ahead and do the oasis the way you'll do this is you'll find the um you'll find the uh sorry the quest, which it will be, I mean, I don't really know exactly. I feel it's not like completely random, uh, but I don't. I haven't really studied the Vestiri Desert like at all for the most point. Uh, for the most part, so this would be your waypoint, which you'd find, but you don't really have to because there is one in Foothills as well uh, that you will have to basically uh, go next to. Um, the Oasis. Where's the skill point? All these quests that I'm actually kind of struggling to find, uh, you people will not struggle to find them because you'll have all the icons on your map. Uh, so that's very, very helpful. Uh, so if this is the foothills, shouldn't? I feel like I should have. I probably like literally went right past it just because it's not available anymore, I feel. But I don't know. I feel like I should still see it. Am I, like, just really, really dumb or something? Honestly, I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe it's where the waypoint is. Could it be that? I don't know, but either way, you'll have a quest that you'll have to basically kill, like, um, a few waves of uh, mobs, which will give you a quest item that you will turn into uh, the two people in town, like the vest, what's their name again? Oh my god, I suck with like the layer axe, like the names of people and stuff. Uh, for the foothills, though, it's a pretty pretty much a static layout. The entrance will be here, the waypoint will be here uh, for the boiling lake. So let's head into Highgate and I'll uh, show you guys where I'm at. Uh, Pateras and Vanja. So if you decide to actually go for the Oas Oasis quest, which does give you a skill point, uh, in the Vestiri Desert, you do that quest, which is um, that that you do like the few waves of monsters, and actually afterwards you'd have to talk to her. And I don't know if you they changed it, but before you actually had to talk to Sin, uh, because he'd give you the bottled faith or whatever it's called to have to get access to the Oasis. 
Yeah, it can't be the bottle of faith. That's literally the name of a flask. I'm so dumb. Uh, but anyways, he'd give you a <laughs> he'd give you an item that would actually uh, give you the possibility of heading into the oasis where you could do the uh, the quest of the scorpion to get your uh, your uh, your skill point. Afterwards, though, you'd want to head into the foothills, just like I said, because you want to head into the boiling lake. Uh, the boiling lake is. I want to say fairly linear for the most part. You kind of want to just head up until you see uh, like little frozen soldiers. That means you're on your uh, on the right path. And that will lead you to the basilisk. Uh, after you kill the basilisk, um, you'll uh, free all these soldiers, just saying. But you'll have your quest item and you can simply log out. Once you've done that, you head back to the foothills. And you can literally beeline straight to the uh, the exit, which is going to lead you to the tunnel. Right here. Uh, the tunnel has a trial of ascendancy, which is nice. Uh, so remember to do that. Uh, would be right here, for example. Uh, and the exit would be located around... Um, I want to say, like... as I. It's got like a rule of thumb that I'd say for literally every single layout, and I know I've said that in like all the other videos as well. Basically, head to the opposite side of the layout entrance. That's like a rule of thumb for every layout that actually applies in this game. Well, not every layout, but like 90% of layouts. So as you can see, entrance is here. I head to the opposite side. I hit a wall. I follow along. I hit a wall. Follow along. Hit a wall. Follow along. And there you go. I'm actually done. I didn't mess... I didn't have to mess with any of the other little dead ends. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. And ob obviously that leads me to the quarry. Uh, the quarry, you'll want to find the um, the waypoint, which is for the most part just a straight line from the entrance. Uh, find your waypoint because you'll need it to come back here. Uh, you want to do the refinery first. I'm not sure if it's always topside, uh, but it seems to be that it's always topside. Uh, or... I guess it's more like right side actually. Like this is layout, so right side. Uh, it seems to me like it's always here, but I could be wrong. Uh, but I don't know. It feels like that, anyways. Uh, the refinery, for the most part, you can just uh, follow along like the the um, the buildings and whatever. Like you you hit a building, just go ahead and f like follow it along until you exit it, until the next one, until the next one. And eventually, you'll hit this little place here, uh, which is, I feel, always located at the exact same place as well. Oh, these boss actually get scary. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and log out. Uh, after you kill him, you'll have access to the little room behind where you'll get your uh, the skill item, or sorry, the quest item. So once you have those two, the one from the boiling lake and the one from the refinery, you can head back to the quarry. Uh, and you'll have access to the belly of the beast after talking to Sin. He'll open it with the two quest items. Uh, there's nothing else to do in the refinery other than to get that that quest. And same thing for the boiling lake. Uh, anything to do in Act Nine is essentially just like the last boss uh, and uh, the skill point from the Oasis. I don't think there's like anything else that's really interesting in uh, in Act Nine. Except, obviously, the tunnel. You have your Child Ascendancy. So, then you can just head into the Belly of the Beast, which is the exact same thing as uh, Act 4, but it's actually more annoying, uh, which is one thing to note. Uh, it seems to me like there's just a lot more dead ends, and I can run this layout a little bit less well than I could run the Act 4 one. Uh, also, having a Bleeding Flask here is almost mandatory. Uh, because these puncture mobs will literally rip through you. And as you can see, these dead ends are, are they're like really freaking far. So it feels pretty bad. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. And you also, unless they changed it, you used to have the, uh, I believe the, uh, the exalted card drop in, in that place. Like the one out of 12 exalts. Or maybe it's in here. Uh, as well as the taste of hate card, so you know if you get if you get lost and kill more monsters and end up finding one of those, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then in the rotting core, you'll reach uh, the black core. You talk to Sin. He'll open up the tree portals, 
And for the most part, they're literally just straight lines into the boss. And once you've killed the three boss, you'll have access to the end boss. And once you've done that, uh, you're officially done with Act 9, and we can head into Act 10. So I am skipping these layouts that, like, have only, like, one thing to do or whatever, just because, uh, essentially I'm trying to, uh, get through with it a little bit quicker. Like, if it's just a straight line, there's no real point of actually running it, you know? So Act 10 starts into the, uh, the Oriad docks, into the Cathedral rooftop. You want to, you know, it's right here. It's always right here. You'll have the Cathedral Apex. You'll have to, you know, save... Banon or whatever his name is, and uh, and then you can move on with your life. So you want to head outside of the Cathedral Rooftops, which is essentially the opposite of when you ran this layout uh, in Act Five. So so long as you remember how you ran Act Five, well, you know how to run Act Ten. Uh, wow! And I hit a denim, dude. Imagine being so bad. All right, that will lead you to the Ravage Square, which is uh, just like it was in uh, Act. Uh, sorry, in Act. Uh, in Act uh, Five, Jesus, it's it's the same thing. It's still static. It remains the same. That being said, I remember saying in Act Five, uh, the waypoint is going to be around around right here for the Ossuary and the Reliquary and stuff. Uh, there's one thing that kind of changes when it comes to Act 10. Uh, the quest that was that I told you guys to skip in Act 5 is no longer there, so it's not a repeat quest. And the quest that I told you guys to do, which is going to be like around here, that I said just make it like a, a, a diagonal line from here after putting your portal down. Well, you actually want to skip that one uh, because it really just gives you like a rare belt. Um, that being said, if your belt truly, truly sucks, uh, you could consider actually running it. Uh, but the quest you actually kind of need to do in the Ravage Square is Valencia's because it gives you a skill point. And that quest, a lot of people struggle with that quest, is actually going to be located around here. So I'll go ahead and like run it. Uh, so you want to basically head to the, uh, the, uh, the, whenever you hit a wall, right, on the most bottom left side, I guess, perhaps. Uh, and head into a straight line, and when you see this little opening right here, that it's so easy to miss. Uh, this will lead you to the control blocks. Uh, you run the control blocks just like you did in Act 5, and uh, once you're actually done running the control blocks, it will lead you to, uh, sorry, to uh, the, uh, the other quest. So you have a waypoint here. I'm not sure, like, I've been thinking about that. What this? What would be the most efficient way of actually doing this? Since you have to backtrack so much, uh, I think the most efficient way is probably to basically when you come into the Ravage Square after you know doing after you're off the cathedral rooftop, I think the best idea is probably to put a portal scroll down here. Then you head into the control blocks. Uh, you'll take this waypoint, head back to town. And then take your portals, uh, your um, your uh, portal back to the uh, cathedral rooftop right here, which is going to be here. And for the most part, now I actually took the the waypoint to the Rabbit Square, uh, but that would just be a straight line. So I'll run it just you know to show you guys. It would just mostly be a a straight line to the cathedral rooftop. So for example, it would be right here, right? So I could just do the exact same thing. I'll show you guys the other quest just in case you actually want to do it until you hit the wall then you follow along and that brings you to the reliquary but the reliquary like I said only has one quest and it's gonna give you the uh, uh, sorry the rare belt which is pretty eh. so if you actually just want to speed on through you could completely skip that quest and head over to the uh, the waypoint of the ravaged square the Ossuary is a little bit different though, because while it doesn't have any important quest, it does have a Trial of Ascendancy, uh, so you could consider running it right now. It's also going to give you, you know, some some nice little XPs. Uh, you have a uh, a hideout in here as well, so it really depends, you know, how you want to go about this. Uh, but if you don't plan on doing your Merc Lab anytime soon, uh, and you have already you already skipped, you know, the bathhouse. Uh, trial of ascendancy so it's not really necessary to do that one anyways because you have to go back for the other one so you could consider completely skipping the ossuary 
uh, uh, Trial of Ascendancy, but you do have the uh, the other quest in the Osirari, which is for the uh, this what is it again? I can't remember. Is it for the the horns or something, or is that like afterwards? It's been a while since I ran uh, this layout, this thing. No, no, I, I don't think I don't think you actually have to run the Osirari at all. But I'll verify just real quick. So, Act Ten. Jesus. So, in the Osirari, right? I'm just verifying right now. This is a very unprofessional video, but what can you say? What can you do? So, it has the quest, No Love for Old Ghosts. Uh, so, it does have a quest, but it gives you uh, a book of regret. So, if you plan on respecting your character, maybe running the ossuary is actually worth it. Otherwise, you can literally just skip through, and you'll want to head to the... Uh, to the entrance of the Rabbit Square when you were in Act 5, which is going to be the Torch Courts. Basically, the Torch Courts is essentially the exact same thing as it was in um, in Act 5 when I, uh, when I ran that one. You could either go from the inside or the outside, it's however you feel. Uh, just follow along the walls and eventually, you know, you'll reach your... Uh, the area that you want to go to, which will be uh, the Desecrated Chambers. Once again, Desecrated Chambers is the exact same thing as it was in Act 5. Uh, you can go from the inside layout or the outside. Uh, oops, I'm not far enough. What am I doing here? And that will uh, bring you to the, uh, the boss, which will give you access to... Uh, Uh, to Kitava, essentially. Well, not Kitava, but the other one. Well, essentially Kitava, but you, first you have to go through the feeding through. So once you've found the Sanctum of Innocence, you go ahead and kill him again. Because recycled content, by the way. Um, and once you've done that, you can head back to the Rabbit Square. And then you talk to Innocence. He's going to, you know, blast a hole in the canals. Or canals, who knows? Yeah, it's probably canals, right? Yeah, it has to be. Uh, for the most part, the canals is a pretty linear layout. It does have a few little dead ends, as you can, as you saw, like at the very beginning. Uh, but for the most part, it's just very, very, uh, very linear. And eventually, you hit, you know, the end of it, which will uh, get you into the feeding through, I believe, is what it's called. Uh, this is actually longer than I thought it would be. So defeating the through. And from here you can uh, just essentially do the same thing. Just always head upwards. And eventually you'll hit Kitava. Literally just a straight line. And you'll, you know, hit the Altar of Hunger where you will uh, actually get to kill Kitava. Uh, when it comes to tips and tricks to killing Kitava... Uh, a movement skill is really nice. Uh, if you have something like blink arrow, you can blink arrow over or flame dash or whatever over his little arm move. Uh, his fire move, uh, essentially, one side will be like dangerous and one side will not be dangerous. And I just died. It doesn't really matter though. Uh, so one side will always be like, uh, will not have any fire. There was a bug, I don't know if they fixed it, where his fire was actually invisible. Uh, so I don't know if they fixed that. Hopefully they did. Uh, but for the most part, Kitava himself is not really, like, a problem. Uh, you know, these things actually really hurt, so you want to stay away from them. Uh, and whenever you hit the phases, like the, um, the, uh, sorry... The heart phases are going to be the actual, like, dangerous phases when it comes to Kitava. Uh, because he spawns a bunch of unique monsters that are actually super tanky and that do a bunch of damage. Uh, when you see this on the ground, also, like, move away because it does one-shot you. Even if you have 2,000 life, which is obviously not much. And once you've done Kitava, you are officially done with Act 10. Uh, you'll 
you'll be able to talk with a bunch of people and you'll officially have uh, the Arias city unlocked where you'll be able to head over here to the Templar laboratory down the stairs and talk to Xana for your first T1 map. So for the people who've made it to the end of the video, I'll go ahead and give you a few tips when it comes to maps in Path of Exile. So, the first map you actually run, which is probably going to be the one you get from Xana, will determine where your Shapler influence spawns. Which is something a lot of people don't know, and even I didn't know until uh, pretty recently. So for example, if I was to take a fungal hollow map uh, from Xana as my T1 map, and I run it, the Shaper influence will start in my top right corner. Pretty much out of Fungal Hollow, right? And then it will move to an adjacent T2 map to the initial T1 map. So that could be either Strand or Peninsula. I don't think there's any way of actually like controlling it to go to one map instead of the other. It seems to be pretty random. Uh, afterwards though it gets kind of random uh, so it's not like that important uh, because it could actually your influence could go to a map that has nothing to do with your top right corner which I think is pretty dumb uh, I think it should follow along the rules of adjacent maps until you get to maybe yellow maps or something um, so that you could actually choose the maps you do want to run especially early which is pretty important uh, but that's for you know that's that's on GGG you can't do much about that uh, but just know that the first map you actually decide to run, uh, the this is where your Shaper influence will spawn, which is pretty important to know. So uh, that's it for Act uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, for the people who've made it this far, I apologize for all the, uh, uh, you know, the brain farts and uh, the blanks that I had. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to actually just go ahead and re-record re it or anything like that. So hopefully you still enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little something. And uh, that's going to be Matthew signing out. Until the next one. Peace.